Okay, so Senator McBroom, for the people at home, please tell me about yourself. Who are you? Well, um, I'm a dairy farmer in uh, Dickinson County, and uh, my wife and I have five kids and I farm with my uh, late brother's widow and her eight children. Uh, we milk about 120 cows. I went to Northern Michigan University, got my degree in both music and social studies education. Did um, a lot of long-term subbing, looking for the full-time uh, teaching band position and got sucked into politics before that came along in 2010. And it was the state representative for um, the 108th district for six years. And I've been the state senator for the Upper Peninsula for the last four. Yeah, I'm sure it's uh, kept you busy over the years. So tell me a bit about how your background or tell me how all of this got into running again. So running for the race this year. Well, I mean, there's a lot of important things that are always going on across the UP and a lot of issues to be a strong advocate for. I've been, you know, particularly, you know, connected with issues around education and local flexibility, local control over education, students being able to pursue careers that are to their best aptitudes and desires and best for our communities. And um, that's something that we made some progress on. I was very proud of in 2014 with John Kivala, Tom and, and Scott. And uh, I think there's a lot more we can get done on that in the near future. So I wanna continue working on that issue. Land-based industries are incredibly important to the Upper Peninsula's future, always have been in the past, uh, mining, forestry, agriculture, and there's tremendous opportunities still afoot for that. And yet we find ourselves fighting against state regulations, um, perceptions, um, whether it's the ability for infrastructure, the transportation of the goods, or just the ability to even get to them. Um, different groups downstate have typically opposed that, hunting and fishing rights as well. And so advocacy for the UP and our way of life, um, continuing to have the freedoms we have up here and enjoy the way our culture works and raise our kids to be a part of that is something I think resonates with people and is important to my family and I find important to families all over the Upper Peninsula and I think that the work that I kind of picked up on with Tom Casperson and have continued on is still really important and that I still have something to offer for that so um, I have one term left to serve and I'd like the opportunity to continue to pursue that work for the people of the Upper Peninsula. Yeah, thank you for that. Now, another big topic here. So following the last general election, there was a lot of talk about democracy being at risk through voting methods or through the soundness of our elections. What are your thoughts on that in the past and moving forward? Well, democracy, you know, and having a republic is something that always takes watchfulness and an informed electorate and a lot of participation. And, you know, the last election in 2020 isn't the only time that there have been questions that swirled around how accurate machines were or whether there was corruption in the process. And so uh, this last time in particular, I was asked to do a deep dive into all of those things. And I spent eight months investigating the situation and we found clear vulnerabilities. We found mistakes that were made. We found bad practices, but we also found that there's a lot of safeguards in place. There's a lot of um, procedural safeguards. And despite some of those being set aside or being ignored, other ones held. And so the end results of the election, um, we can be very confident turned out right and that our local clerks across the UP did a, a wonderful and fantastic job. But we still need serious reforms and, and we can, some of these are so non-controversial and would help really bolster confidence that people can have in the process in the future. But it also takes a lot of time and study on the behalf of every citizen to really understand these things for themselves and not just take my word for it or someone else's word, but to go learn how these systems work, learn how the safeguards work and determine for themselves that they can have the confidence in the system that I found that I could have and, and worked so hard to make sure was worth having. 
Yeah, so another topic here. So if reelected, what would you do to improve access to mental health resources in the Upper Peninsula? Yeah, this is an incredibly important issue and, and has been since I started in the legislature and first started learning about how important this issue was. Um, since the closure of a few state facilities back in the late 90s, um, the Upper Peninsula has been particularly adversely impacted by the lack of support services for mental health. We have great people at the county levels and, and county men, community mental health who work very hard on this, but there's a lack of continuity. There's a, a lack of consistency across each county, um, both in how laws are interpreted, what services are available and what funding is available. And so finding a way to create continuity and consistency across the county lines is one of the important things we need to really work on. And then trying to leverage the Upper Peninsula as an entire community that needs services from the state when it comes to this issue, I think is a really important step forward. Rather than looking at them as each small county community mental health, we need to have a UP wide approach because if it was just one city of 300,000 people, we would have a lot more services than we have across the entire UP right now. Um, I recently got legislation passed that I've been working on for over 10 years on the transportation of patients and not taking our local law enforcement off of the streets and not treating our mental health patients as prisoners, but instead as patients with a health problem. Um, that's taken 10 years to get that done. Um, finally got support from the administration, um, getting a signature from the governor on that and, and moving forward with that plan. I think it's going to provide some real relief, both financially and um, for patients. But there's still clearly a lot more to do. I have been meeting with providers all across the UP and other interested parties and schools for a couple of years now. Then COVID happened, kind of froze the work in time. We're getting back into the groove on this issue, but it, it's critically important that we get some real support moving forward from the state to recognize the how they're really providing better services in other areas that we're not getting in the UP. Better access, I should say better access to services. Yeah, thank you for going over that. Yeah, certainly. So now next topic, if reelected, what could you do to improve access to health care for seniors in the Upper Peninsula? I think once again, we're really facing a difficult thing across the UP when it comes to integration of different federal mandates, Medicare, Medicaid, and the and doctors who are willing to take those various forms of payment or aren't, it is really putting a huge burden on all different levels of life. But senior citizens are a group that's facing a critical need as well. We also have to deal with what benefits are even being provided and when what co-pays are being expected from them. And so there's a lot of challenges right now to providing that level of care for any different group, not just senior citizens. Um, what we can, part of what helps significantly is economic growth and development, because as our communities are more prosperous, it's easier for us to get more providers here. That's one of the major things that we continue to emphasize. How can we keep our economy going so we're not an aging community, but so that we can provide the services that those who are aging need. And so that's one of the, the reasons why I continue to emphasize providing education opportunities for the careers we have here, provide continuing our land-based economy. Those are all critical parts of putting that whole thing together so we have the robust services that we need for elderly. We also have to do something about this increasing restrictiveness that on state policies that impact our medical providers, especially our emergency medical technicians and, and paramedics. The decreasing amount of people willing to become volunteers in our various communities is shutting down ambulance services all over the Upper Peninsula. And that makes it harder for our elderly to be able to live where they want to, um, to continue to stay in their homes and not have to move into town or to a nursing facility. So these are also areas that I've been working very hard on 
and still seeking real answers for how we can get back to having our local communities still able to provide those services and not be shut down over over regulation or too many restrictions on people entering those volunteer services. Yeah, thank you. And this will be my final question. Uh, do you have a message for undecided voters right now? Well, I, I hope that people will consider so continuing to support me or support me for the first time based on the work that I've done and, and how I've tried to conduct my office with um, honesty, straightforwardness, and not being afraid to take positions that are unpopular at times um, because they were the right thing to do. And, you know, we provide amazing service, I believe, from my office for our constituents, whether it was helping with the crisis in the unemployment agency or um, you know, the, the agencies that were coming in and restricting small businesses um, with really ridiculous rules or how unfair it was that they were taking money from businesses and then not letting them operate. So I've been an advocate for, for our, our people in the UP and our way of life and have tried my best to serve with honor in that, in that way. And so if people have questions, are unsure of that, have heard conflicting reports, I want to meet with them. I want to. I want to see them. I want to talk to them on the phone and assure them of. I, I haven't changed who I am. Still, just the dairy farmer and, and father here in in the UP, and trying to share our values with my colleagues downstate to the best of my ability, and uh, have one four year term left to offer, and and would really appreciate people's consideration. All right. Well, thank you so much, Senator McBroom, for meeting with me today. I really appreciate your time and your responses. And with that, uh, now everyone will be able to watch. So <laughs> if you have any, have any troubles or need anything follow up, just let me know. I'll make more time. Right. Well, thank you so much and uh, have fun at the fundraiser. See ya. <laughs> Thanks. Yep. Bye.